<laughs> hi guys welcome back to the channel once again it's your girl dumebilia if this is your first time coming across my channel you're welcome i do hope you decide to subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber you guys know that i love you it's so good to have you here welcome back so today's video is something a little different i thought it'd be fun to do this i'm going to be reacting to like we're going to be watching these videos together i've watched it before it's a seven part series as made by uh, a very beautiful sister and she titled it death to diaspora wars so um her name is that brown girl on tiktok you guys are going to see her handle and all of that so you guys please just go ahead follow her on tiktok show her some love i think she's absolutely amazing i always enjoy her content so without talking too much let's begin Happy Black History Month from your friendly neighborhood, Black American. And to kick things off this month, we are going to start with a little presentation I want to call Death to Diaspora Wars. Because I'm not doing it this month or year. All right, so here's a list of similarities that we all have that we can reflect on so we can start acting like we got some goddamn sense. Starting with Black. Can you tell by the complexion of these arms where all these people are from? Uh-uh. No. Didn't think so. We are all black. Next up is John LaFrice and Jambalaya. Y'all are not going to play with me. We can continue the wars. But what we cannot argue about is that these dishes are very similar. Do we all put our thing down, flip it, and reverse? You know, I don't know what Jambalaya is, but it looks yummy. <laughs> then Jollof rice. We're still over here fighting over Nigerian rice and Ghana Jollof. <laughs> <laughs> reverse it absolutely but they're still very similar bringing me to my next rice dish red beans and rice now you may call it rice and beans or beans and rice rice and peas even though it clearly is a bean but nonetheless it's still very similar next we have shaken ass hips and thighs and this is probably what i'm most passionate about because one thing we're gonna do is just exactly that and whether it's a wine a grind a twerk a yike a dagger does not matter all right and one is not more cultural than the other one does not deserve to be more sexualized or villainized than the other we're gonna break back we're gonna throw ass and we're gonna catch it all the same yeah. thank you next we have steaming greens again back to the food if you're gonna tell me all these greens are clearly not deliciously steamed I don't know what to tell you. Next up is stew. Did you think I was done with the food? <laughs> Absolutely not. Because one thing we're going to do is put some meat and vegetables in a pot and stew that shit up. And again, all these pictures I'm showing are different dishes. But dishes nonetheless that look delicious. Okay. Next we have a... And the quintessential international... And when we say it over here, we do it with this... I don't know. It's not an eye roll. We do it like this. <laughs> for, you know, for emphasis. You know when you are looked at like this from up to down, it makes you feel like you've just been undressed. Like that's the highest form of disrespect. <laughs> and the quintessential international language across the African diaspora for you got me fucked up. All right, this is the collective black confusion coming together linguistically. We all know what and mean regardless of where we come from and regardless of the languages we speak. Next we have... The N word. From South Central to Senegal, Harlem to Haiti, Johannesburg to Jamaica, London and Liberia, they all stress this out the same. They do. They internationally have their own language across the African diaspora, and that language is gaslighting, but unfortunately for some of us. But you know, I've never understand why we still refer to ourselves with the N word, like it's a term of endearment. But it's great. I don't know. I, I just think it's disrespectful to ourselves. I don't know. We can't get enough. On that note, we're going to go on to our next segment, but that's going to be done in a part two. Part two. This is part two of Death to Diaspora Wars. I know there's some flags missing. It's just, I just had to choose one image on Google Image. You feel me? But I see all the flags. I see, I see all of us. I see all of us. Before I go on to the next segment, if you are non-black watching this, you have one thing you should do. Yeah. Our next segment is, I forgot black people could be annoying too. Starting with my personal unfavorite, uh, know your roots. <laughs> You see, the thing is, um, I do, I do know my roots. What happened was a thing called slavery, and uh, we did, we came from over here, right? But then, you know, they kind of took us all the way over here. So uh, my roots exist over here as well. We can also include, well, at least I know where I'm from, because some of us over here, yeah, y'all too. We, we like to say that to each other, you feel me? And I don't know if you noticed, uh, we, we was on the same route, beloved. Same route, same bus, different stop. Next, we have, uh, we are not from Africa. Um, We, we are. A lot of people would argue that they are not from Africa. I'm tired of he reading all of that in the comment section. I'm tired of seeing videos of people saying that. At this point, I don't even argue anymore. Like, everybody should just believe what they want to believe. We, we are. Now that we've cleared that shit up, <laughs> um, next we have, uh, y'all don't have no culture. 
Hmm, here's the thing about that. See, little known fact is we all have culture, <laughs> you know? And we actually come from like one of the most culturally and ethnically diverse places on the planet. Um, again, because there was a thing called uh, slavery. And um, some of our cultures look similar. That is very true. And some of our cultures have some differences. But we all have a culture. And we're all very influential in the world. You know everybody want to be us? Yeah. So we really don't have to argue about that, right? Right, okay. Next we have, we don't have generational trauma like you. And this one, this is a new... You know, that's the thing. Like, a lot of us on the continent feel like, oh, we don't have generational trauma because our ancestors were not taken as slaves. It took me a while to actually understand that colonialism in itself was trauma. The fact that we're Christians now, we speak English, we're bearing english names a lot of us don't even know how to speak our native tongue believe me some of us don't know a lot of us don't know our history our countries are still struggling with poverty and a lot of things is trauma is trauma from colonization like we need to know like <laughs> we should not be feeling like we're special over here because we all got different arms of the same effed up messed up things that the palm colored folks did to us this one, this is a new one. All right, this one's a mother doozy. The thing about this one is you're probably saying this to somebody else in English, Spanish, French, or Portuguese and not a native African language because uh -oh. <laughs> slavery and colonization, aka trauma. I know, I know, this affected all of us. It affected all of us. All right, so dangling it in front of each other's face and, 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 and picking and choosing what traumas we each don't have is not really productive, is it? Rather, we should probably focus on healing the other, right? Yeah. Right. Speaking of generational trauma, black Christians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're getting into Now when it comes to Christianity and we talk about how it was brought by the palm colored folks, it's a very touchy subject. So I'm not even going to say anything. The thing is a lot of the things she's pointing out are things that I've somehow covered in a lot of my videos, right? So it's nice to just see how summarize this whole thing. Like I really am enjoying these videos. It. we're getting into it beloved and there's a lot that can go into this one but specifically what i'm talking about is there seems to be a lot of black christians that are really judgmental about hoodoo voodoo and african traditional religions meanwhile a lot of the practices that they're doing resemble and emulate hoodoo voodoo and african traditional religions and if you're confused on what i mean pause to read you know the regular speaking things into existence or manifesting the speaking in tongues catching the holy spirit or spiritual possession or the altars whether it's ancestral or in a church or eating black eyed peas and collard greens to bring in the new year for good luck and good fortune you feel me i just am saying and the reason for that is give me a second give me a second this again it all goes back to this i mean again we can continue with the part three if y'all need me to just in case it's really not getting in your heads and you still want to have a diaspora war back by super popular demand death to diaspora wars part three again if you are non-black here is the Vimo and cash app if you are black we got some ground rules that we need to discover first is there's a whole lot of us yeah there's a whole lot of us i can't go there's a whole lot of us we are not a minority can they stop referring to black people as a minority we might be a minority in some countries but in the grand scheme of things on this planet earth we are not a minority that is why we need to unite because there's power in numbers right there's a whole lot of us i can't go through 50 11 countries in every single presentation i'm going to try to cover the regions at best but every single country i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do it okay second is i know i know a lot I know a lot, but I don't know everything. And this is where y'all come in. I might not be able to cover every single aspect of every single country and culture, but y'all can comment that in the comments. Let me know where a connection makes sense. Let me know how to pronounce something. Third is home training. Please also drop in the comment section if there are any connections and similarities between the black diaspora that she's not mentioning. Please drop them in the comment section because I think there are a lot of similarities. Home training. When I see like movies, see the Caribbean people and the way their parents treat them and talk to them the discipline you know a lot of the values the family values the whole african diaspora african americans as well i feel like we have a lot of similarities in our values home training <laughs> including the trauma that comes with how we are raised let's not even let's not deny that okay third is home training act like you have it part three is going to delve deeper into food so again jollof rice and jambalaya i already said i'm not playing with y'all okay it's nothing like it's nothing like pull up the recipe Pull up the receipts. You're telling me these dishes are nothing like jollof, tabujan, gala red rice, jambalaya, nothing like, nothing like. Okay, again, I'm not playing with y'all. Moving on, we are going to talk about gumbo or gumbo. This is the same dish. This is that has three pictures of different dishes, but this is the same dish. Gumbo refers to okra, right? So you know, I've been hearing gumbo. I didn't know it was okra. And now that I'm looking at the picture, it looks 
like seafood okra we have okra so we eat it with like fufu i'm sure you probably heard fufu you guys need to taste that it's yummy Woo! and it's slimy and very healthy and nutritious <laughs> there's a lot of like it, it looks like something that i would eat <laughs> It looks like it tastes good. Same dish. Gombo refers to okra, right? So we've got sauce gombo, super conja, super conja, sauce cope, gumbo. This is literally, I mean, like, you could just look at it and see. That's the same dish. Stew and smother. Now, I know I talked about stew last time, right? Because one thing we're going to do is put some meat in a pot and stew that shit up. But I learned the cooking technique where you fry some meat a little bit, da -da -da -da, and then put it in the stew, put it in some sauce, is a West African cooking technique. And we see this all across the diaspora. I love me some smothered chicken. Okay, that shit hits. You know the my folk didn't know what to do with rice, okay? That's why they got us in the first place. We got dri kolek pois. We got wache. We got moro. We got rice and peas. You see these two dishes? They not even the same, but they the same. They're siblings. Feijoada and red beans and rice. This is like, this is this is just a light-skinned version of this one. Steaming greens. Now, I already talked about this, but I just have to tell y'all. This is the Caribbean. East Africa. East Africa. We don't talk about East Africa a lot, but hello. I know how these taste just by looking at them. Talking about all this food, we need something to wash it down. We need a drink. And one thing Ooh. I love is Jamaica. Yeah. I love Jamaica, but you don't. We call that Zobo in Nigeria. We make it with pineapples, with the leaves. We make it, a lot of things. And then you sieve out all the stuff and just have the juice beautiful nutritious yummy and you put ginger in it as well so it clears your throat it's medicinal it's mm, wow but you don't only have to get that shit in latin america or the caribbean you can get that in west africa get you some pizza you can always get a horchata yeah we had that too you thought this was spain no no there's one thing about spain they're gonna take something and they got this shit from north africa mm -hmm. and in modern day mali nigeria tiger nut milk you can find this in west africa now, it's not surprising that we have a lot of our food and part of our culture in some of all these American, you know, Southern, Southern American, I think Northern American countries, because they came over here, they took our people. So, of course, our people left with some of the culture, right? Yeah. Tiger nut milk, you can find this in West Africa, Kunu Aya. And there's horchata with rice, there's horchata Kunu with Aya. Yeah, I know it. Side note, it boosts libido. It boosts libido. Yeah. <laughs> but that, what, what that is and we need a dessert you feel me we need a dessert now can we find rice pudding in asia is that where it originated yeah but making its way over here to the western hemisphere african slave trade all right one thing i love is arroz con leche you can find that shit in west africa you can also find a couscous version chakari in senegal we got fried fritters i love we love frying shit what can we say cara in west africa and acaraje in brazil and that acara is like beans so you wash it and then you blend it and then you make it into a paste and then you fry it in hot oil. Mwah. Yummy. That is black eyed peas, right? But here, you know, we put our thing down, flipped it in reverse, and made some hush puppies with cornmeal and festival all with cornmeal and a little bit of sugar. Last but certainly not least, I mean, what, are you, uh, what do we even have to say? Plantain. Plantain. What you call it? Plantain. Oh my plantain, God. Plantain, God. Plantain, I cannot put that shit on my plate, plantain. you know? <laughs> <laughs> we call it dodo over here when it's fried. Dodo okay we're doing part four now part four of death to die for wars if you are not black you already know the drill here's the vimo and cash app by the way she's leaving her vimo and cash app for the non-melanated folks reparations y'all pay for the education that you're getting because this is a family meeting <laughs> and you guys basically have to buy your way like get a ticket to send her some money <laughs> i think she was just joking anyways but you guys know yeah Let's just continue. For this part, we're going to do another segment of I Forgot Black People Can Also Be Annoying, starting with my personal unfavorite. I'm not black. I'm... <laughs> this one is a special case of delusion. What I truly want to understand about this one is why are you so afraid of being viewed as black, beloved? What's wrong with that? You know, there's a video that I want to do about people that do the whole I'm not black, I am this. I'm not black, I'm that. There's nothing wrong in identifying with your nationality, but you're still part of the african diaspora you still have african heritage that makes you black although i know a lot of us like to not you know associate ourselves with the word black because it was given to us and i think it it might have some kind of connotations that are not very positive but yeah what word should we use in exchange for black if we're trying to not take the negative um aspects of the word black should we say brown should we say chocolate skin like what should we use but in essence it's either you just don't like the word or you're saying you're not black because you don't want to be associated with your african diaspora brethren so which is it right because you stay letting race ethnicity nationality beat your ass you saying i'm not black i'm insert ethnicity does not change the fact that you
black you're confused and you're confusing the rest of us see how all these people are spider-man you see how this is all spider they look a little bit you know but they, they spider-man this spider-man got a little bit different red this one got white stripes and the spiders look different but they all spider-man that's how the world looks at your black ass see all these spider-man you see how they're all what what are they spider-man white thank you very much moving on to that's slave food now this one mm, this one's really funny because it's like oh my god it's slave food yeah you know who else would make it the slave food your cousins your cousins you all don't know that my enslaved ancestors and your colonized ancestors were cousins you ain't know that crazy anyways moving on to i'm not african oh this was wild because we already acknowledge you stay getting curb stomped by these but you know who else beat your ass ethnic origins ethnic origin comes in with a double whammy is your ethnicity black american yeah are your ethnic origins from africa yeah in the city and ethnic origins are not the same thing and you can acknowledge your ethnicity be proud of one's ethnicity without literally denying facts of your ethnic origins and your dna ancestry what is not clicking it's all embarrassing but moving on to the diaspora wars are one-sided they literally are not no they're not you guys are all inseparable all around the world the call is coming from inside the cookout and outside at other cookouts you know who else exists everyone in the diaspora bootstrap bootlickers oh oh you pull yourself up by the bootstrap black capitalist bootlickers who love to perpetuate white supremacy in our communities across state and country lines i cannot stand y'all y'all do the work for the white supremacists y'all do the work for the white supremacists under the guise of just trying to make it work in this world and i can't stand you guys i mean i could do a whole video on the bootstrap bootlicking black people i could truly okay the next one I am try I'm fighting for my life to have race, ethnicity, and nationality, and ethnic origins. Stop beating your asses. But if you want to stay getting beat the fuck up, what, what am I supposed to do? I guess part five of Diaspora Wars is going to be me explaining the difference between these four things. Race, a colonial construct and classification based off of physical attributes. Ethnicity, a grouping of people based off of shared or similar characteristics, whether it be ethnic background, cultural, and or social. Nationality, where the fuck you was born. And ethnic origins. Where your people, your family, your DNA, your ancestry ethnically originated. Now I'm going to use all these words in a sentence for you just to make it even more clear. I could have the same or similar ethnic origins as somebody from Ghana, Senegal, Jamaica. But my ethnicity is black or Afro-American. Because culturally and socially, I share those characteristics. And my nationality, because of where I was born, is American. But my race, based off of my physical characteristics and how I'm racialized in this colonial construct, is black. And this is where you, I'm not black, I'm getting a tizzy because you don't want to be claimed as black and for whatever an anti-black reason, I don't understand it. But it does not matter what you call yourself. Because race is a social colonial construct made in a system, you are going to be seen as a colored Negro. You are going to be seen as black. That's kind of how a societal construct works. And your ethnicity that you identify with, that you are a part of, is within said blackness. So you being Jamaican, you being Haitian, you being Senegalese, you being uh, Ethiopian, it, it's all within blackness. If you look black, you just so happen to be a black person who's also that ethnicity. In a perfect world without the existence of colonization and slavery and constructs, would I be seen as a black American woman? No. No, I would be seen as a melanated person with a poom poom. But we don't live in that society. So that's not the case. I'm only at part five to this Debts of Diaspora Wars, but y'all are reminding me every day, every day why Harry couldn't save all of us. Every day. I think people always confuse the whole ethnicity, race, nationality, all of that stuff. So I like the way she broke it down. Let's go over to part six. This is part six of Debt to Diaspora Wars. And again, if you are not black, here's the Venmo and Cash App. We're going to do another part of I Forgot Black People Can Be Annoying Too, but we're going to focus on respectability ringleaders. When I tell you I could write a dissertation about the respectability ringleaders, oh my gosh. They exist everywhere in the diaspora. It does not matter where you go, you will find a respectability ringleader. To introduce them, we're going to focus on the appearance one. So, you know, don't wear that bonnet in public. Bonnets and do-rags are ghetto. Patches and piercings are unprofessional and they're not beautiful. I find it to be so... I personally don't... I don't think I agree with the bonnet in public thing. And why I say this is because I feel like bonnets are for sleeping. So if I want to go out and I want to protect my hair and I don't want to deal with like styling my hair and all of that, I'd probably just like tie a scarf or put a cap on it, you know, but bonnets in my opinion are for sleeping. So yeah, I think I disagree with that. But then it depends on the person. So everybody do what you want. I'm just saying like for me. 
Oh, tattoos and piercings are unprofessional and they're not beautiful. I find it to be so interesting considering that tattoos and piercings have been a part of our people's culture. Been yeah. a part of it. Literally yes. BC. And they represented a multitude of things depending on where the people came from. From status, wealth, to just straight up beauty, expression, strength, power, fighting off negative spirits. If you haven't already noticed, there's men in masks presenting people on here and that's not an accident. Yeah, because they were getting piercings too. Nowadays, God forbid one of your black sons, husband, nephew, cousin gets a piercing. Some of y'all might call him gay and equate that to weakness. Interesting. Hoop earrings, period. Going back as far as ancient African civilizations, hoop earrings sometimes... I love my hoops. <laughs> ...represented grace, beauty, sensuality. As they do in the Western world, they started associating black and Latino women wearing big hoops with being ghetto and rat shit. But as far as I'm concerned, the bigger the hoop, the better. And what we had to do, per usual, was reclaim that shit as a symbol of power, beauty, and grace. And this yeah. is yet another example. I've already said Okay, and I really included this one because this one really grosses y'all out. But again, just like everything else that I've said, this has also been a symbol of beauty, grace, status. All these indigenous places around the world, indigenous African people saw all of these things as beautiful and graceful, right? But now we see it as just unkept, immoral, and distasteful. Colonization. I don't know how many times you have to say this. They literally went to where our people were from and made that shit up. They saw how our people lived and expressed themselves and just continued to call us names and said that we were unruly savages that needed God. Which again is so interesting considering that a lot of these forms of expression had to do with their own religions and relationship with God. As they were bastardizing our religious practices, they were colonizing us with their own. But that's a whole other video. Continue an example of this is head wraps. Head wraps, these are beautiful, gorgeous. One thing, one thing about black women, we're gonna wrap our hair. And when black women get to a certain age, like our mother, a traditional outfit is not complete without a head scarf. They always have a scarf. <laughs> and you could be wondering, damn, did they bastardize this too? Yes, they absolutely did. So during slavery, a lot of African enslaved women did wrap their hair like they did back in Africa. But in a lot of places in the US, the Caribbean, South and Central America, they made black women, whether they were enslaved or free, wear head wraps as a sign of their lower status. But as our people do, we put our thing down, flip it, and reclaim it. And some black women started to wear these head wraps in very beautiful styles as a form of resistance. And in South America, started putting in coded messages into their head wraps to communicate with each other without mass knowing. If we can see someone wear this beautiful gele, why does it bother you if someone wants to wear a bonnet in Walmart? Whether it's outside protecting their hair at Walmart or in a video or dressing it up, bother you so much. It's something that we've been doing. In addition, it makes me think of do-rags. Just wanted to protect their waves, protect their hair. And then they were like, you know what? This shit is fashionable. I'm gonna start wearing it. Why do you so well, Why do people not like do-rags? I don't think there's anything ghetto about them. Of course, I know black people use it. Other people don't use it. It's a black thing. But what is wrong with do-rags? What's ghetto about them? I think they're really stylish. Why do you associate this with negativity? Why do you do that? I can tell you why. You're listening to colonizers. You're listening to the colonizer. I want your respectability ring leaders to so badly see. Okay, so the last- they made that shit up. I don't always want to do a PowerPoint because that's a lot of labor. So part seven of Diaspora Wars is going to be a roast of all the black people across the diaspora. Because everyone gets on my nerves. Black Americans, some of the critiques on us are not just because people are haters and they want to be us. Some of y'all like to practice American centrism and don't learn about blackness anywhere else in the diaspora. Stop doing that. Afro-Caribbeans and Afro-Latino folk. Your people got dropped off just like mine did. So you don't know where you're really from just as much as we do. Black Brits, you live in the OG colonizer country trying to critique everybody else about cultural awareness and blackness as if you're not speaking in an accent that's going to trigger our ancestors. Like, really, the Black Brits I featured some videos talking about Black Brits on this channel. And <laughs> I think they're just in a world of their own. Yeah. Not too much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. African folk, it's so beautiful and lovely that you have a connection with the continent and you know where your people are from, but to act like you don't have the same effects of colonization when some of y'all speak English and are Christian, it's just not adding up. Black Americans acting like our people weren't from Africa doesn't make you different. It makes you delusional. Black Brits, y'all live in the West and wear a do-rag. I really don't even understand what the beef is, for real. Afro-Caribbeans looking down at twerking, ass shaking and grinding as if it's deplorable, ghetto, ratchet and not- Do Afro-Caribbeans look down on twerking? I even think twerking it's a Caribbean thing. Like, have you seen Jamaicans with the dirty wine? Like, is that not what a lot of their songs, the dance hall songs sing about? Get busy. You know, Sean Paul and the rest of them. <laughs> this is my first time hearing that, that they look down on twerking. Ooh. It is for real. afro caribbeans looking down at twerking, ass shaking and grinding as if it's deplorable, ghetto, ratchet and not full of culture. Sounds like the pot calling the kettle black. We can all shake ass and break back and have fun. African folk, you might know the specific ethnic tribe that you come from and cool, but you got black folks in South Central LA, Brooklyn, Baltimore, Atlanta that look just like you and could be your cousin. 
So what does that say? Afro-Latines. Okay, two things can be true. And those two things are you are black and your ethnicity. Now that we realize everybody shit stinks, maybe y'all can shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, this was definitely fun. Like, you know, this just reminds me of when I think I saw a comment on one of my recent videos where somebody said, Dumebilia. The person actually wrote my full, my name. Dumebilia. Your thinking is a cake, just like the other Africans. And I was like, hmm, who would have thought? Maybe I should just go back to the jungle where I'm from. <laughs> Things like that don't faze me. You think I'm a cake because I'm African. Honey, thanks for watching my video. That's just what I have to say to you because, you know, this channel is basically a pro-black channel, a pan-African channel, and... I try my best to feature stories from everybody and not just talking about race to the season, but talking about cultural issues and diaspora wars and basically how we can be better as a people. And if you don't have a pan-African mindset or a pro-black mindset, you're going to be very triggered by a lot of the things that I talk about on this channel. So just brace yourself or you can save yourself the headache and not, just not watch if you're here to come and talk about how this group of black people are better than the other group of black people. I don't believe that and I don't endorse that kind of rhetoric so mm -mm. i'm not hurt whenever people come and say stuff like that you know I, I just realized that everybody's different so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed watching that video it's just amazing how similar we are and i think that's what a lot of us don't realize and courtesy of this channel and even before i started making content like this i've been opportune to have some online friends that are african-americans and all the african-american people that have kind of had contact with have been nice and amazing to me and they've been you know curious about the culture and they've been really sweet you know giving me advice here and there checking up on me wanting to send me gifts and i didn't get any form of hate from them so sometimes this whole diaspora war thing i wonder if it's just on the internet because i don't see that animosity and i wish we can all just come together and you know but then, I don't know, maybe that's just the prices in me with my head in the clouds. But I get excited with videos like this that, you know, support that pan-Africanism and that unity and stuff like that. And we need more stuff like that. We really need a lot of people who don't want to associate with other black people to get over themselves. Like, we're stronger together, okay? So anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this video. Please, in the comment section, also share any kind of similarities that you guys think we have. I definitely want to hear that I think we have rhythm, you know, music. That one is a given. Black people everywhere. Woo! Like our music, our dance on point. Okay, I think I need to end this video here. You guys let me know what you think. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.